Welcome to another edition of the podcast known as Blending the Family. I'm your host, Tommy Maloney. Before we get started, just want to let you know my new book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m. is available on the website, blendingfamily.com. And if you order it from the website, it will be autographed. Or you can also go to Amazon and purchase it that way. Either way, the new book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m. is out now on with the podcast. Welcome to another edition of the podcast known as Blending the Family. I am your host, Tommy Maloney, the man, the myth, the legend behind the mic. That's me. Or you can find me on LinkedIn as the Tommy Maloney. Our guest this week on this episode of the podcast, we have Tracy Malone. Hold on. I know what you might be thinking. Uh, If you're a regular listener to this podcast, you're thinking, Tommy, didn't you already have Tracy Malone on? You know, possibly your cousin? We don't know yet. Yes. However, uh, this episode is when I was on Tracy Malone's podcast, so we're going to replay that. And if you heard that episode with Tracy, you know she is uh, full of energy. She is awesome. And hopefully I was too. Just... A couple of announcements, and then we'll get into the uh, episode with Tracy. Recently just came back from uh, California. California. No, it's hot pot high. I know you're thinking now, Tommy, don't ever sing again. I won't. Anyway, uh, my wife and I, Anne, we just celebrated our 10-year wedding anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. And in the best part is we've been married 10 years to, uh, well, to each other. We went up to uh, wine country for a couple of days, and then we spent uh, time in San Francisco for a couple of days, and it was so much fun. Yes, the obvious, we drank some wine, but we had some really uh, incredible Uh, As the kids would say, off the chain food, maybe they don't say that anymore. I don't know. We have no kids in this house anymore. Anyway, uh, I'm going to say anyway a few more times. Yeah, yeah. So for my Toastmaster friends listening, whatever. We had, yes, obviously some uh, wonderful wine, but the food, I, I didn't imagine the food being so five-star Michelin type food. Um, I will I will put out a recommendation. One of the our, our last night in San Francisco, we went to a restaurant that I had been there 20 plus years ago, I think. and I didn't know they had moved uh, from one side of the street to the other because I guess they had a fire. But the name of this restaurant, Free Plug, is called The Stinking Rose. And if you've ever been there, you understand that the foundation of pretty much every meal, and I mean every meal, is garlic. Okay? Including dessert. So, if you like garlic and you like ice cream, (laughs) yes, they put garlic in their vanilla ice cream. I had no problem with it. My wife, eh, not so much. And and she she is a foodie, but at least she tried it. And there was another table right by us. Uh, these young kids, maybe 10, 12 years old, and they were they were loving it. So anyway, stinking rose. If you're ever in San Francisco, what else is going on? Oh, uh, so speaking of weddings, we have a wedding uh, this coming. Uh, weekend uh, this Saturday my oldest bonus daughter my wife's oldest daughter Betsy uh, getting married to her fiance Tristan and for whatever reason Betsy thinks I am a, a good candidate to be the MC of the night and we spell MC with M C and if you are a old school hip hopper like me MC stands for moving the crowd and when I say moving the crowd, it's going to be me letting you know the guests know when when dinner's ready and when it's time to dance. Because we have Slim Moses. Slim Moses, yeah. Slim Moses, the DJ, is going to be in the house um, playing 
stuff off of Spotify. <laughs> Betsy already has a, a Spotify list already created. So cool. So cool. Anyway, um, so excited to be sharing this episode with you. So excited about uh, being back behind the mic. And it, I know it's it's been a minute or two. Just needed some time and uh, happy to be uh, here. I, I'm in my home office. I am. Uh, I, I took this week off for the wedding because I didn't want to be stuck in an airport, freaking out, going, "I'm never getting back. I'm never getting back." And yeah. So anyway, that's about it. We've talked about uh, the wedding anniversary. We talked about food. We talked about the upcoming nuptials. So, and we talked about Tracy Malone. But but before we do that, let's listen. To Tracy Malone interviewing me, Tommy Maloney, on the podcast. There we go. Hey, as our good friend Terry Crews would say, your success is my success. Welcome, Tommy. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, cuz, I can say cuz, possibly, maybe, we don't know yet if if you and I are related, but thanks for having me, Tracy. I am nervous because I don't I'm not a, I, I don't do a lot of video. I didn't have my makeup artist in and I'm, I'm really paranoid that I didn't shave properly. So thanks for all the paranoia. Appreciate you. You know, it's all, it's all for the team. You take it for the team. <laughs> and we are talking about the co-parenting team today. And I am so excited to have you here because men need more support. Um, it is not easy to co-parent with anybody. And, um, often men get the raw deal in this situation when the um, mom card is pulled and they have this sort of innate built-in better thing that they are better. But um, we know that men have struggles and that's why I have you here. Besides that, we have the possible same last name. Um, my my parents or my grandparents changed it from Maloney um, back, back in the 1900s. But you know, I did that, the, the family tree thing. And I'm like, yep, could be related. We could be. I, I, I haven't done it yet. Uh, I think we're going to do our dog first and find out what he is other than a dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I learned a lot. But then, you know, you stop paying and all, everything you learn gets thrown away. So you're like, well, that was fun. <laughs> could they just print it out for me and I'd have it for life? Or, oh, I have to pay $10 a month for the rest of my life to remember who I was related to 400 years ago. <laughs> Seemed reasonable. It was yeah. fun. It was fun, but not as much fun. So, how I want to start is is um, just tell people about who you are and what blending the family is, and then we'll go into some of the questions that I have for you. Well, I am Tommy Maloney. I am the what I like to call the chief vision officer of blending the family. Blending the family came about because. Uh, I got remarried and I went from being a single dad to having two bonus daughters and a wife. And at one point we had uh, my wife's niece living with us and we had a female dog. And at one point it was just myself and our dog Duke and my son. So there was a lot of estrogen in the house, but it was a lot of fun trying to discover and build in, in my eyes, a successful blended family, um, and it worked for us. So blending family is all about trying to successfully navigate through the trials and tribulations of taking two families and morphing them under one roof. Mm -hmm. And then you started a podcast, which is how I found you. Yeah. So over 220 plus episodes as of this recording. And as we were talking about earlier, uh, before we started, I, I come from a radio background and podcasting was just a natural fit for me because like I said, I have a face for radio. <laughs> you have a face for everything, just so you know. <laughs> um, you. And again, we don't care what anyone looks like. It's, it's, it is easier to hide behind, you know, if you don't want to put on your makeup that day, for sure. Um, but I, I'm here and I'm really glad that you are here. So what I want to start about talking about is how does it feel to co-parent with your ex, for example, as a male? Was there 
you know, some kind of bias to her being a woman, you being a man? Did you step into it gracefully? I know, and I don't know that you had a narcissistic partner. I'm not saying you are. The people on my channel are here because they had a narcissistic partner. But just start out by telling us how that was for you before the blended family started. It was rough, uh, mostly because I grew up as an only child. Uh, my parents divorced when I was five. I was uh, one of those kids that was was affected by the divorce. I battled my years of depression, uh, suicide attempts. So when it came to the divorce, I was just lost. And matter of fact, the first Christmas uh, back in 2008 was rough. And I didn't feel that I was a good enough father. I didn't feel like I was a good enough man. And so what I did was I, I talked to my son and, and told his mom that um, I, I have to, I have to go away. I just need a, a mental, some mental time because like I said, Tracy, when I went through the divorce, I just felt like an epic failure. Mm. And so it was not easy co-parenting at first because I felt so inferior to my former spouse. I felt um, that I, I couldn't compete, even though it wasn't about a competition, Tracy. It was about, you know, what's best for our son. And it was it was a rough going, probably those first four, five, six years, really. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't know. You talked about depression. You talked about sadness, right? Um, it is overwhelming to have a, a marriage fall apart. It, it's not what anybody planned. Not anybody signed up for, hey, give me five years and then we'll call it quits. We, we didn't like think about that. And, you know, coming from a house of divorce as, as you and I were, um, we don't want to fail that way. We, we go into it with this much more brighter outlook and I'm going to make this work. And, you know, then for, oh gosh, I'm only going to get to see my kid every other Christmas or, you know, every other week, it's, it's like that loss. Like I'm going to miss so many things and that fear of that sort of thing. How are your feelings going into this? And, and I, I can mirror everything you, you just said. Um, it was, it, it was a lot of those feelings that, oh my gosh, when am I going to see my son? How often am I going to see him? Um, you know, when, when I got divorced, I, I didn't have a place to live. And what I did was because I'm, uh, was a road warrior, I just used hotel points for the weekends. I had my son and he and I spent time in different hotels. And the, the funny thing in, and I can laugh at it now, Tracy, there are things that I can actually laugh at now after all these years. Again, that was back in 2008. And so one of the things I can laugh about is you know, when it came time to, you know, booking the hotel, my son had one requirement that the hotel had to have uh, a swimming pool and, and a hot tub. And the funny thing was at the time he couldn't swim. He didn't know how to swim, but it was great because it gave me an opportunity to teach him how to swim, just like my dad taught me how to swim. So, you know, looking back, Tracy, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, bad times, but if you take those bad times and try to you know, not to use all these terminology, but reverse engineer it, pivot, whatever you want to call it, take it a different way. I was very blessed that, you know, I was married to, you know, my son's mom. We have a, a great son. He's, he turns 19 in March. So I look at, you know, what I went through as a man, you know, a lot of depression, a lot of times of uh, being alone. Again, being a road warrior for me, I was, you know, in a hotel a, a lot by myself. And so there were times, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. There was one time where uh, right after the divorce, I was in a conference room and somebody said, hey, Tommy, well, you're married. You can have an opinion. And I turned to them and I, well, I mean, I have a ring now, but I didn't have my ring on. And they're like, what happened? I said, well, I'm, I got divorced. And like, when did this happen? Why didn't you tell anybody? And I'm like, I didn't want to bring my personal life to the work mm -hmm. space. And so they're like, talk to us, tell us, you know, do you need us to sit and talk? I'm like, 
no, I'm good because that's the man in me saying, oh, I'm good. I'm good. And I go back to the hotel room and, and cry and you know, drink a bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and again, there's shame too. When the, when the coworkers found out, it's like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. again, the, 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 I'm a failure. I couldn't make it work kind of card comes over us that, that puts us in that place to have to explain it to other people. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so men have different challenges than women. I know that, but what are the biggest challenges that men have in a co-parenting kind of thing, like changing the routine? I, I would I would say the first thing actually Tracy is is eliminating it being a competition. Mm-hmm. You know that was the thing for me was you know here's my former spouse um, in her career very successful making a lot of money. Um, you know she had the house she had you know a newer vehicle. I mean all those things all those you know, those wants, you know, you want, you know, to have that nice house, you want that car. And here you are living out of a suitcase. Um, But at the end of the day, stop competing against your former spouse, even I would even say stop competing against yourself. Because at the end of the day, again, it's about your kids. It's about how are you supporting your kids? Um, You know, the biggest thing for me was how do I stay connected with my son when I'm not in the house? How do I stay, you know, in the back of his mind? And one of the tricks I did was as I traveled, I would send him postcards. And even to this day, he he has several of those postcards left. And those are little things that can help you, you know, stay connected with your kids. Don't, don't worry about, you know, even my wife and I have gone through this with when, when, uh, with her former spouse, you know, he got a nice camper, he got this toy and this toy. And, and again, as a man, I felt like crap because I don't have that kind of income like he does. So not only trying not to compete with my former spouse, I'm not trying to compete at the same time with my current spouse's former husband. So as a man, it it can get really overwhelming. But again, what can you do as a parent su- to support your kids? Yeah, finding new ways to to love them when mm-hmm. the off time is happening, right? Um, because kids need to be reminded, and you know, a, a pizza dinner on Thursdays is not enough. So staying connected to them and sending little cards, sending little things again doesn't have to be anything but a postcard mm-hmm. or a thought. You know, I was thinking about you today and saw this beautiful tree or, you know, have you seen the snow? Whatever it is, just bring them into your world, I think, is going to be a really big piece to help you transition to a different and more lonely life without them in those times. Yeah. And again, just like you're saying, you know, what little things, you know, I I remember years ago, um, uh, a book called, I think it was the entrepreneur roller coaster by Darren Hardy and Darren Hardy talked about, have you ever been bitten by an elephant and people laugh and go, no. And have you ever been bitten by a mosquito? Well, yes, it's the little things and those little things can add up. And, you know, again, for, for my son, the little thing was having a a hotel that had a pool and a hot tub, you know, those, if I ask him now, he might have some of those memories, but that that's okay. That was our time. That was our bonding time. And, you know, again, with the postcards, um, you know, when, once he first got a phone, I got to text him, you know, you, even though you try and call our kids and they don't answer the phone, at least like you were saying, at least, you know, even sending a, a quick little task, text saying, Hey, thinking of you, love you. Um, hey, with my son and I, if I find an article dealing with some kind of either hockey or baseball or whatever, uh, I'll send him that just, just to let him know I'm, I'm thinking of him. Mm-hmm. That's really sweet. I like that. Um, it's, it's, it's such a powerful thing because we think if we're co-parents, we have to do it better. We have to outshine, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's stay in your lane and, and know that you can't be the mother if you're the father, 
and and just be like, this is how our relationship's going to look. And, you know, you are also not dealing with the, the crazy narcissists that are going to turn the kids against you and have you at legal battles on every single turn. So it's a gentler way to really not you know, be able to co-parent, you know, if they're, well, I, I, I will stop you there. Cause we did have to go to court. We did, um, you know, one quick story was when uh, one weekend I had to help my son with homework. A couple of days later, I got a nasty email back from my former spouse saying every answer you helped him with was wrong. Um, that, that made my day. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, we had to go to court because something you were just talking about, she told me in an email that our son decided one day that he felt like they should move to, uh, where my former wife is from, from Wisconsin. And I'm thinking, no, he, he doesn't wake up one day and just say, Hey, I want to move from Colorado to Wisconsin. Love the weather. Um, so that was, that was, um, a, 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 this was a, a lesson for me about not being afraid anymore. And here's what I mean by that. So like I said, Tracy, I got an email saying that all the answers I got that I helped them with were wrong. Okay. There were times on a Sunday, I would drop our son off at our our little mutual meeting place, I would get halfway up the road and, and I could hear my phone going off an email. And yes, I'll admit it. I would glance at it and see, yep, yeah, it's from her letting me know how possibly I screwed up that weekend. Okay. So because she had that kind of power, Tracy, because again, like I said earlier, I felt so inferior as a man, as a parent, I always felt that, oh, she's, she's right. She, she's right. Okay. After going to court and after, and, and I've told people this before, this was not a win. And I mean, what I mean by that is even though the judge ruled in our favor, it wasn't a win. It, it just meant that my former spouse couldn't leave the state with our son. Okay. Again, I don't look at it as a win. I look at it as a negative because number one, um, I had to max out credit cards. I had to ask uh, my, my current wife for money. I had to ask family for money to pay the lawyer. That's not a win. So after going through that, Tracy, she could do no harm. She couldn't do anything else. And, and I'd be like, okay, bring it. Just bring it. To me, it's, it's like what the, the Stoics talk about. We put the worst case scenario in our head. And mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll never forget it was in court a half a day and the judge took a half hour uh, to think about his ruling, to go over all the evidence. And I, the whole time he was talking, I'm just crying. I'm just crying going, I, I lost. I'm going to lose my son. I'm, I'm, I'm going to barely see him. And as the judge is talking, I just put my head down on the table and I just sat there, waited, waited. And when he finally gave, you know, the ruling, I was like, I was, I was relieved, but at the same time, I felt she took me to a place that I never thought I'd be. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not afraid of her anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. And, and if she sends me an email, yes, I'll have my wife look at it before I send it and say, <laughs> no, you can't say that. You can't do this. You know? So, um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that's the, that's the beauty of having a, an editor in house. Um, so after going through that, Tracy, it was, it was like, okay, I, I, I felt like I could, I can accomplish anything after that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I have a, I have a, uh, a card and I'm not going to pull it out here, but it says there's a lot of life after I don't give a shit. Right. Mm. And that's where you got, you got to yeah. that point where bring it on, you know, I'll battle that and I'll battle the next one. And, you know, you get to a point where, you know, sticks and stones can break my bones, right. Where they're sitting there, they're making false allegations they're lying. So you got the answers wrong. Is it better, a better parent that like corrects them and gives the kid the right answer. So he doesn't learn that, 
like how he was doing it? Or is it let them fail and let them see? I'm sure you didn't do it intentionally either way. <laughs> but like for her to sit there and pick on that, like that's what so many co-parenting situations, everything's wrong. You didn't do this. You, you didn't bring back the right clothes. These were dirty. Did you know that they had a bruise on them? You know, all of these tiny little, you know, things that get piled on are not helping the kids right they're not helping you know the situation where you know they get home or they're still in the car and mom's like texting and screaming at you for not getting the test right or whatever little minor infection and again there there could be big ones in narcissistic world we're talking about things that you know you have to battle there will be battles in a narcissistic co-parenting thing they're not going to like what you're doing they're going to battle you but at the same time it's it's pick your battles and pick the ones that are important to fight and then go i can't do anything about that particular thing she's going to completely complain that the clothes weren't clean enough even though i washed them they weren't ironed or whatever let that stuff go and not let that come into your heart And I just want to piggyback on that, Tracy. And the key thing, what you just said is let things go. Because if if you're expecting, you know, what's how's that saying go? If if you're expecting them to drink the poison, something, something, something. Anyway, I had to let a lot of things go because I I was always waiting for uh, like a thank you or nice job, but you got to let it go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I even got an email when, when our son was, I don't know, fourth, third grade, something like that. And the teacher was just praising how wonderful our son is and how behaved he was. And I, and I responded back saying majority of that goes to his mom because he spends more time with her. So, you know, kudos to her. And yeah, in the back of my mind, I wanted a response back from her, but that's okay. At the end of the day, I let it go. So how did you learn to let it go? I want the men to hear this. And then I'll tell you how I tell people how to let it go. But how did you do it? Because it's not easy. We can say, let it go. We can put a post-it on the bathroom mirror. We can sing a song, let it go. How did you do it? I'm very blessed. Um, like Just like your sign over there says, I, there oh, you are. There. Yeah. I got one blessed. over there. I knew it. they're yeah. all over. <laughs> I am very blessed to have a, a wife who's not only my wife, but she's a partner. And there are times where she can sense when, when I'm going through, uh, I, I call my depression fog and she can sense it. She's got that sixth sense. And she knows if I start going down that path, she can, she can guide me. And so the way I'm able to let things go is I run things by her because it's a safe space for me. And, you know, quite honestly, she has gone through similar things that I did other than court, but, you know, she's had to deal with, you know, her former spouse. So it really helps now to the men. Mm -hmm. The the biggest thing I can say is uh, going to therapy is not a weakness, it's a strength. And for somebody who's spent a lot of time in therapy, um, even before I got married the second time and last, this is it. Um, we, my, my wife said, would you be open to going to couple therapy before we get married? I said, yes, yes. Because we came from similar uh, marriages. We didn't want to recreate that wheel. And so to the men go seek help, you know, going to the bar and venting, that's fine. But if you really need help, you have to find a trained therapist that is going to help you get through, you know, the, the cause. Um, and, and also if you don't feel that that therapist is listening to you, guess what? You can fire them and move on. Um, I I have done that in the past. So number one, have a good partner, but if, if you don't have that number two, You've, you've got to go seek professional help. Yeah, it's, it's so important. And, you know, kudos to all the men that do, uh, because I know that there's also a little bit of shame in there, right? There's nothing wrong with me. It's her that's crazy. Well, there's just things you got to talk through. You have somebody mm-hmm. that has that listening ear that gives you the right advice, that leads you in the right direction that you might not see yet. 
right? You're so used to going that direction, you don't know that just a little bit different would get a different result with your partner or your ex-partner in this case, right? Um, it's learning to manage them. It's learning to co-parent with them, not only on the simple, you know, what camp are they going to? And, you know, do you get them next Tuesday or any of those like details that have to be ironed out? It's, it's more like, what do I do when she blows up and goes crazy? How do I not react? How do I calm myself so that my kids don't see that? How do I not internalize that I'm a bad person, that I want to kill myself, right? We have to learn that, again, help is brilliant. And I'm so thankful that you like uh, talked about that because for men, this is a very important part. You know, the negative thought patterns that come into our head that become just recordings, they just come back and you don't even realize that you're catastrophizing. No, right. they didn't say you weren't going to ever see your kids, just not Tuesday, but the fear, you know, and then we hyper, you know, get over it. And it's, it's a harder thing. If you learn that you can turn that dial down and not let yourself go off the negative thought pattern trail, you'll have a happier life. Yeah. And I, and I go back to, you know, it's only been a couple of years since I've really studied and, and read a lot of stoic philosophy, but we do as humans, we put the worst case scenario in our head and then we just lose it. Mm -hmm. And so instead of listening to what the person is saying, or actually reading, you know, the email, what the person is saying, instead of just seeing the little things and just go off on it, it it's not going to help you. It's not going to help your family. So, you know, the, the thing I, I do want to give kudos to my dad, because my dad is the one who encouraged me about, about therapy. So, you know, my, I am very blessed to have, you know, two amazing parents. I am so grateful that, you know, that, that they're in my life. And so uh, again, my dad had no shame uh, about going to therapy. My dad is a very open person. And so I'm very, I'm very grateful to have uh, my dad. I want to take a quick break just to remind you that my new book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m. is available on the website, blendingthefamily.com. And if you order it from the website, it will be autographed. Or you can go to Amazon and also purchase the book. Again, the name of that book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m. Now, let's get back to our guest, shall we? Let's. That's an important thing. And that's what we want to teach these guys that their kids are grateful and need them as well. It's an important part of the whole puzzle. I have one really more, very important question that I want to go over with you that I know a lot of people struggle with. It's like, oh my God, they're doing this. They let them eat pizza or soda all night long and they don't put them to bed and then they go to school and they're tired. Like the, the different rules in the different houses. You can't control that, right? As long as it is not harmful to the kids, staying up all night while it is harmful to the kids, you can't change it. You can go back to court, you can complain. A judge is gonna, they're not in danger, really, you know, let that go. We didn't talk more about the let go. All right, so go ahead. So what do we do about the different sets of rules or the different behaviors of the kid in the two houses? Um, to plug my first book, because when we designed the cover, we designed it with uh, two households mm -hmm. because that's that, that was the philosophy. And so it is difficult. And I feel so, so bad for the kids. I mean, I, I mean, I went through it and it was not easy. You, you know, you're, you spend majority, and for me, I spend a majority of time with my mom and then spend you know time with my dad. And so again, you have to let things go. Oh my gosh. They stayed up all night and watch horror movies. Who cares? They're kids. Let them, let them have fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't at the end of the day, that's their job to be kids and have fun. And, but when it comes to structure, so that's where what what we did was we we had family meetings and we would say, all right, here's the rules in our in this household. You know, we can we can massage them as best we can, but here's the rules in our household. And you know, we understood. My wife and I understood that you know when our kids go back to our former spouses' houses, the rules are going to change, and 
yes, there have been times where emails had to be sent out saying, all right, here's, here's what happened here. Um, you know, the, the hardest thing is if a parent tries to, let's say, take away a phone for a month, now they're in your house. It's like, that's, that is difficult. And that's where you have, you, you really have to have open dialogue with your former spouse and say, listen, we'll honor it, but we're not going to do it for the full what time, you know, we're going to, you know, and it's hard for the kids because especially the younger ones, when they're trying to figure out, well, why can I do that here, but I can't do it there. And it's, mm-hmm. it's it, it is confusing. And so it's, there's, there's no easy answer. Um, you know, again, that's why I created blending the family because there was nothing out there that really I saw that worked for us. And that's why we created something to help parents and blended families go through what you and I are talking about. So, you know, I, I would strongly suggest to, to your audience, Tracy, is, you know, number one, have open dialogue with all the kids, you know, be honest with them and, at, and even have open dialogue with your former spouse and say, sorry, we're not going to do it this way. Or yes, we'll support you on this. So you've got to have communication. I mean, that's, that's what it, it's going to boil down to communication, either with your former spouse, with your current spouse and with the kids. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's things that kids need to learn the boundaries in our house. This is how we're going to do it. Uh, It might be confusing for them, but build the structure in your house. Um, You know, a lot of the women that I coach and they've got the narcissistic spouse. um, They're just like, there's no structure and they, they just get to do whatever they want and they don't eat well. And they don't want, you know, if, if men can get into the habit of going, it's not Disneyland dad, they still have to do homework. They still have to do these other things. If you're not teaching the kids that, then you are doing the disservice to the kids, not just, you know, having your fun on your, on your time, mm-hmm. but like you are parenting instead of Disney landing, right. Where everything's just, you know, pizza and popcorn. It has to be where they've got a plan and the kids will react better if they know the rules and they know how to, this is what I've got to do. And they fall in line and they feel safer because it's not, well, well, what happened to the rules? Yeah. I mean, was everything perfect in our household? No. I mean, but that's, that's family. I mean, I mean, when, when we would, you know, talk to the kids about, you know, why we have to do it this way, it's like, you know what, if, if, if we screw up, we screw up. I mean, at the end of, end of the day, let's just admit we screwed up. I mean, so again, it's, it's so hard on the kids having to bounce from different households. Um, my, my uh, bonus daughters were very fortunate because uh, where we live and where they grew up in, in their dad's house is literally down the street versus my son who's about an hour away. And so there were times where I, I felt bad for my son because he missed out on things versus the girls being here. So unfortunately, that's, that's the way of the world, you know, when it comes to, to divorce. But at the end of the day, you just, if you can love them and just, that's it. Absolutely. That's a perfect way to end, except that I wanted to say how to let go because I'm going to teach them how to let go, which is what I teach my clients. For the most important thing about letting go is understanding what you're holding on to. Mm. Right? If you don't have that and you're like, well, I can't let go. Well, what are you letting go of? The fact that she did something different in her house. Um, you know, is it that this isn't good for the kids and, you know, whatever it is, you, you analyze what it is and you, you know, figure out if it's important. But I have this story. It's going to take one minute to tell it. But every time I tell it to people, they go, oh, okay. And nothing to do with narcissists, but it is two monks are on their way back to the monastery after the rain. And they reach a river and there's a woman standing there. Help me, help me. I can't get across. So the old monk puts her over his shoulder, carries her across the river, puts her down, and they kept on walking. Six hours later, they reach the monastery and the young monk starts to scream at the old one. How could you touch a woman? You know, we're not allowed to touch a woman. And he's freaking out. (laughs) And the old monk says, I put her down six hours ago. 
you're holding on to her. Every time you're holding on to something, think of that monk and go, what can I put down? Because walking that six hours or walking six days or until you see your kid next week is ruining your time, just like it did that young monk. He held on to it and it just made him crazy. The more you can learn to let go, the quicker you will have a more peaceful life. My mom always called it renting space in my head because that's what my former spouse was doing. She was renting space in my head because of things I, I didn't let go. And, it, and again, I'm just like, but, but, and my mom's like, just don't worry about it. Move on. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I tell people, I highly recommend uh, the book, the daily stoic by Ryan holidays, because it's, you have to live in the moment, live in the moment. The past is the past, you know, you, you can't predict the future. So just let go keep moving on. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the key. When people learn it, it's like, oh, my life is so much easier. Like they have to learn their triggers. They have to learn all kinds of things. But when you do, your life is peaceful. How do people find out more about you, find your podcast or your website? How can they find you? Uh, it's just simply just go to uh, blendingthefamily.com, blendingthefamily.com. You'll find information about the books. You'll find the podcast. You'll find the blogs, uh, the coaching. It's all there in one wonderful place. One all one-stop shopping. Well, yes. thank you so much, Tommy. And thank we'll you, find Tracy. Out if we're related. <laughs> I know, cuz. I know. Wouldn't that be cool? And you're right here in Colorado. I have a yeah. relative. Oh my God. I'm coming <laughs> over for dinner next weekend. Just saying. Um, but... Come on by. Okay. You got Anytime. It. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here and setting all of the insight to the men who are going through the co-parenting journey. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy.